Thank you so much for joining me for this webinar as part of the Lady Parts Doctor website. It's brought to you um, through a grant that I received through the, through the Black Physicians Health Network. And so I'm very appreciative and grateful to be able to provide this uh, webinar for you. As a physician in Western medicine, you don't often hear us talking about meditation. And so I just wanted to change that. Yes, there are people who talk about meditation and health, but we don't talk about it enough because there are so many benefits. So I wanted to have this conversation with you. And I hope that you enjoy it. And certainly I will be soliciting your feedback at the end of the webinar. You will get an email just like you got those reminders um, just to see what your experience was and if you had any questions. So who am I? I am Dr. Stephanie Hack. I'm a board certified OBGYN. I am a wife. I am a mom of three children, five and under. I am a podcast host. And I have, if you haven't heard of it, I have a podcast called the Lady Parts Doctor Podcast, where I discuss issues that affect women and people assigned female at birth that specifically relate to physical, mental, and spiritual health. It's holistic because I recognize that if we are going to treat the body, we need to focus on the mind and the spirit as well, because that's really the foundation. I am also an entrepreneur. As I started the podcast, I started it because I was having many of the same conversations with my patients about kind of fundamental basic health things. And they were such great conversations. And I thought, you know, we need to be having these conversations on a larger level. So how can I do that? And I decided I'm going to do this podcast. And I had been something I've been wanting to do for a while. And through Lady Parts Doctor, I'm able to do that. And once I started the podcast, I thought, okay, we need to provide other ways to share this information and for people to interact and really just consume it and engage in a way that they feel most comfortable and a way that they feel seen and a way that they feel heard. And so that is brought in the entrepreneurship part of it. I go, I give talks and conferences. I do webinars, as you see, there are guides. So check out ladypartsdoctor.com. Um, and in addition to all of this, I am a meditator. I have been meditating for a long time. It is not something that I think in the beginning that I realized I was doing, I was just kind of doing it. And then ultimately, I did realize I went through some health issues that meditation really helped me through. And so meditating is something that I try to do at least once a day, at least once a day, sometimes twice. But I think that it is so important. I'm very passionate about it. And I want it to be something that more of us are aware about. <clears throat> so through this webinar, it's really going to be casual. I have a presentation that I've set up and through this presentation, which again is is a casual conversation. I'll be checking to see if anybody's hand is raised or if anybody, if you have questions, you can put them in the comments and you can ask them as we go. And I'll check, I'll try to check every slide or so or every few slides to see if there are any questions. As a matter of fact, as I'm saying this, let me check. Okay, looks like we're good here. Um, but what I ultimately want you to take home from this is to understand the link between stress and various health conditions. Also to understand the benefits of meditation, to learn meditation techniques that you can practice because ultimately this is for you. I want you to take something out of it and take something home with you. And I would love for you to feel comfortable meditating. And we're going to talk more about that. So if that makes you a little nervous, um, don't be nervous. We're going to get you there. And this short presentation, it should really be just about 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes or so, but we are going to meditate as well. So I want you to be aware of that. That's coming up and it's going to be, it's going to be good. I promise. So let's talk about, let's talk about stress. <laughs> I know some of you are probably like, I don't need to talk about stress. I feel stressed enough. I felt stressed today and I'm with you on that. <laughs> but stress impacts our physical body in so many ways. And you might hear me say our physical body because I believe that we are spiritual beings in a physical body. 
And stress also impacts our mental health and our spiritual health. So how does stress affect our musculoskeletal system, our muscles and tendons and ligaments? Well, has anybody ever had a headache? Has anybody ever had back pain or shoulder pain? Has anybody ever had maybe a deadline coming up and felt tension in their neck or their shoulders? Has anybody um, ever, do you grind your teeth or maybe tense your jaw? I know I'm guilty of that. Um, maybe you've gone to the masseuse and they felt your back and done your massage and said, oh, you have knots. That is stress. So stress attributes uh, to headache, back pain, shoulder pain, all of these tensing of our muscles that ultimately manifest in our physical body as pain, but that starts as stress. How does stress affect our respiratory system? So I want you to think of a time where you maybe got some, and don't think about this too long, but maybe you got some devastating news or you were in a situation that was very unexpected how did you feel? Maybe you started breathing a little faster. Maybe your breaths got a little shorter. And for someone who has a respiratory condition or a respiratory disease like COPD, or maybe someone with asthma that can manifest as asthma attacks. Also, um, in shortness of breath in that way. So that's how stress can affect our respiratory system. How does stress affect our cardiovascular system in many, many ways? One, in that same situation where you got that news or maybe you were driving and maybe someone started to come into your lane or something like that, instantly you can feel your heart beat a little faster. So you're already breathing a little faster. Your heart beats a little faster. Um, your heart also contracts faster when you're when you're under stress. Um, you will have elevated levels of stress hormones specifically called glucocorticoids and specifically cortisol. So you can have an elevation in those and that increases the risk for hypertension. So high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke. And these things are also worse in postmenopausal women because estrogen, when you're creating higher levels of estrogen, when you're premenopausal, estrogen is protective on your blood vessels. Well, after menopause and you don't have that same level of estrogen, you don't have the same protection. So you're at a higher risk of those cardiovascular events. The endocrine system. So that's the system in our body that's responsible for creating our hormones. There's something called the hypothalamic pituitary access. We will just call it HPO. That's what we refer to it. But it's a communication system in your brain. Your hypothalamus communicates with your pituitary gland, which then communicates by sending out other chemicals and hormones to influence your body to make other hormones. Well, that hypothalamic pituitary access, that HPO access, also causes an increase in the production of steroid hormones. We talked about cortisol before. So cortisol increases the fuel that's available throughout our body, the fuel that we need, the, the energy that our body needs. It's part of that system. Glucocorticoids like cortisol also regulate our immune system and reduce inflammation. Well, all of that has a significant impact and the inflammation part also relates back to uh, our cardiovascular system. But chronic stress leads to impaired functioning, com impaired communication um, between our immune system and that hypothalamic pituitary access. And then also it's been linked to the development of future conditions like metabolic conditions, like obesity, diabetes, depression, and immune disorders. How does stress affect our GI system? Have you ever, maybe you had an exam coming up or maybe you had to do some public speaking, just something that makes you nervous or a little anxious and maybe your stomach started to feel a little queasy. Maybe you felt like you had a little bloating or a little gassiness. Maybe you had a little stomach pain. So stress can affect the brain gut communication and um, it can trigger pain, bloating and other gut discomfort or you at least 
feel that more than you did before. And it's also associated with changes in the gut bacteria. So I'm going to tell you a little story. Back in the day, I used to, um, I worked for this show on BET and I was very excited. I got the opportunity to co-host. It was a big deal. And the dressing room or the room that was shared before the show started, it was a live show. Um, I shared with the host. And so I remember I was just so excited. We're in LA. We're going to record. I had no idea where the host was. I had no idea where he was, but I knew I was feeling nervous. I had the jitters. My stomach was queasy. I'm looking around and then I don't see him and I'm getting more and more nervous. And then all of a sudden I hear a toilet flush and I hear the door open because he was also having the same stress on his uh, GI system as I was, right? So that's my a little story about that that always makes me chuckle. But stress affects our GI system in many ways. I'm sure you've had your own experience with that. And then finally, the central nervous system. So it's not so much how stress affects the central nervous system, but how stress activates the central nervous system. And once the CNS is activated, then it is going to activate our other organ systems and then repeated activation causes, um, can cause damage to our bodies over time. So how does stress specifically affect our reproductive system? Because that's what we came to talk about, stress for women's health in many, many ways. And these are just some of the ways that we have listed here. So menstruation, have you ever if you're still getting a period, or maybe when you used to get a period, had the experience of being really stressed out, maybe you had an exam coming up, or you just had some stressful event, and then your period was late, and then you got even more stressed, perhaps. Um, well, stress can do that. It can cause periods to be irregular. It can cause them not to come on time. Um, it can cause periods to be more painful. That's a condition that we cause called dysmenorrhea. It can cause more painful periods. It can also cause a change in the length of cycle. So if you've ever talked to your OBGYN, and you're still getting a period and you hear us say menstruation is a vital sign, because when we ask you about the length, the duration of your actual bleeding days, um, and we get more information about that, that can also tell us if maybe there's some other stress going on in your body because it's affected by stress sexual desire. So many a time I would have a patient come into the office and we do a well woman exam and have an entire checkup. And at the end, I say, do you have any questions? And they'd say, oh, well, I'm experiencing decreased libido. Well, then we'd get to talking more about it. And you find out that they have all of these things that they're juggling. And all of those things lead to stress. And when you're stressed, you're not necessarily thinking, okay, this is a great time to have sex. Some people are fine with that, but a lot of people are not. So stress can lead to lowered sexual desire um, and stress can affect pregnancy. So there is uh, an impact on a woman's ability to conceive the health of her pregnancy and her postpartum adjustment all are related to stress. So really it impacts kind of every aspect of that process. If you've ever known someone who was trying to get pregnant and maybe having difficulty getting pregnant or needed to see a reproductive endocrinology specialist and infertility specialist, they often experience a lot of stress and that does affect pregnancy outcomes. There's research to suggest that. We talked a little bit about how the communication and the link between stress and our immune system and how that becomes impaired when our stress levels increase, well, that can lead to an increased risk of infections. And then finally, there is a link between some GYN cancers. There's some research that suggests that certain chemicals that are released when we're undergoing stress are more prevalent in ovarian cancer and cervical cancer, suggesting a link between stress and certain GYN cancers. So, you know, we are we are all connected and every part of us is linked to the next part. So it's very important that we think of our bodies and we think of our spirit and our mental health all kind of together because we are all together. 
So thank goodness there are things that we can do to kind of minimize the stress. And that's where meditation comes in. So meditation refers to a variety of practices that focus on the mind and body integration and can be used to calm the mind and enhance the overall well-being or for just a deeper connection to inner self. The meditation the earliest history of meditation has been linked back to Vedic texts in India um, about 5,000 BC. So many, many years ago, that's when they first saw drawings that indicated meditation. And then shortly thereafter, by a couple thousand years, they also found the first written text about meditation. But it's present and been present in all cultures for a very long period of time. There are many, many, many different types of meditation. So these are just some very common ones that I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, some that you might be most familiar with. Mindfulness. So mindfulness is a technique of meditation where distractions, thoughts, and feelings, you're not ignoring them, but you're just kind of acknowledging them and not being judgmental about them, but just kind of accepting them. They are there. And you're really kind of focused on the present and every aspect of what is going on around you. And mantra meditation, you are using a repetitive sound to clear your mind. It can be a word, a phrase, um, a sound, one of the most common sounds being um. There is spiritual meditation, and this is used in almost all religions and spiritual traditions. So if you thought, you know, if you've ever heard people say prayer and meditation, because meditation is a form of prayer. And then finally, visualization, where you focus on enhancing feelings of relaxation, of peace and calmness by visualizing positive scenes, images, or figures. There are many, many more types of meditation. So there are guided meditations where someone leads you into meditation. There's movement meditation, which includes walking, gardening, chi. That's a form of meditation. Um, there are There's loving kindness meditation, progressive relaxation, where you focus going from the top to the bottom of your body on relaxing and then tensing your muscles. So that's progressive relaxation meditation, and that's to reduce the stress and tension throughout your body. So there are many, many different types of meditation. Well, what are the benefits of meditation? For your physical well-being, multiple studies have shown that people who meditate have a decreased sensation of pain. Even a decreased sensation as it relates to menstrual health with period pain for people who have cramps. Um, mindfulness, for example, has helped people feel, have less period pain, less pain and cramping with their periods. Also, studies have shown that it reduces blood pressure, it reduces heart rate, it increases blood flow to the brain. It improves PMS symptoms. So people don't feel the same level of anxiety and depression and upset that they feel and reported decreased PMS symptoms after undergoing a program of meditation versus people who did not. Also improved menopausal symptoms. So people who underwent uh, meditation experience less hot flashes, less vasomotor symptoms for our mental well-being. And it's, I didn't mention this before, but this is Mental Health Awareness Month. And one more than one in five women experience some kind of mental health conditions such as anxiety and depression. So our mental well-being is incredible incredibly important. The benefits of meditation have also shown in stress reduction, as we talked about before, decreased anxiety, decreased depression, and improved memory. All good things. I'm just going to check and see. Any questions? Nope. Great. So I had to mention this study for meditation for cardiovascular health. As we mentioned, heart disease is the number one killer in the United States of men and women. So in this particular study, it was a randomized controlled study and it was small. They only had 201 participants, but they looked at 201 African-American men and women, and they assigned them to two groups. Either they underwent transcendental meditation, which is another form of meditation that we didn't talk about, um, where you have a mantra and it's, there are people who 
who undergo specific training to teach transcendental meditation. And so they underwent this transcendental meditation program. And then the other group of people went through a health education program focused on cardiovascular health. And for the transcendental meditation group, they did 20 minutes twice a day while just sitting comfortably with their eyes closed. Over an average of about five-year follow-up, there was a 48% risk reduction in all-cause mortality, so all deaths from any cause, from MI, which is myocardial infarction, which is a um, heart attack, and then stroke in that meditation group versus the group that underwent health education. Furthermore, they just had an overall better survival rate after that five-year period. And these were, and I didn't mention this, but these were 201 people who already had heart disease. Now they excluded people who had had like a heart attack or stroke within three months of the study. But for people who had had an incident that was at least three months out, they were able to have a 48%. Now, I think that we've built a strong case for the importance of meditation, but even though we build a strong case and talking about this, you might still be like, and, and I know that there are a number of people, some of you are, you meditate regularly, it's what you do, and some of you are beginners to meditation, and this conversation is for all of us, is for both, both groups and everyone in between. So for people who might have still a little mental block about it, the common myths are meditation is hard or you're not good at it. I know that's often what I hear. And meditation isn't hard because you can't get it wrong. And I think that's the thing. You you might sit down and think, oh, um, there are thoughts coming in my head. My mind is wandering. Well, your mind can wander doing, during meditation. There are many different types. And it's a matter of finding the meditation that works right for you. But again, you can't get it wrong. Silence is not required. You don't have to sit in silence. As we mentioned, some meditations have a sound or a sound bath. There are many different types. Um, you don't have to sit. So for anyone who's like, I can't just sit down, you don't have to sit. And I know for many of us, we're so used to doing, 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 and sitting and not doing can be difficult. So you can eliminate that. You can do the gardening. You can do Tai Chi. You can go for a nice long walk. All of that counts as meditation. It doesn't only calm your mind. So I'm talking primarily about the benefits of meditation, but there is some evidence, and there was an article that came out recently about some harmful effects of meditation, but that was for people who did these prolonged, like long all day meditations. And they were meditating for like eight hours a day for multiple days in a row for example, well, you don't have to meditate for hours. Ideally, you'd want to be able to set aside a good 20 minutes for meditation, but that's not always possible. I don't meditate for 20 minutes every day. Most of the time I meditate for 10 to 15. So it doesn't take hours, but if you have 10 or 15 minutes that you can carve out to yourself, for yourself, ideally at the beginning of the day, that's a great time to meditate and just kind of get yourself in a serene, calm state or, or connect with your inner self at the beginning of your day. So there are many different types of meditation techniques, okay? And so this is where we're going to be um, not, not quite interactive, but I'd like you to try some of these techniques. So I'll just kind of pause and give you time to do them. But there's breathing, okay? So breathing is a very common meditation technique. And these are some of the techniques that I want you to be able to take home and practice. I'll take home, you're at home probably. <laughs> but I want you to be able to take with you and take beyond this webinar and to continue to practice on your own. So there is a breathing technique called 478. And it is done to help reduce stress and anxiety. In this technique, you're going to breathe quietly in for four seconds. For four seconds, you'll hold it for seven seconds. And then you will exhale kind of with a little power, a little ump for eight seconds. Not everybody can do that entire time for various reasons. So if you don't think that you could do four, seven, eight, you can do two, three and a half, four. And we're gonna try that exercise, okay? So everybody, I want you to just 
take in, just exhale, release all the air from your lungs. And now you are going to take a deep breath in. Four seconds, four, three, two, one. Now hold it. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now exhale. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And so ideally you would do that for at least four cycles of breathing to just help reduce your stress and anxiety in the moment. And remember, if that was hard for you, if you felt like you couldn't do that, you can also just, as long as you keep the same ratio, just cut it in half and do two, three and a half and four. Now, Another more common technique, a very common, and maybe the one that you're most familiar with is mindfulness. For mindfulness, you give 100% of your attention and focus to the present. So if you're going to be mindful in this moment, that would be giving 100% of your attention to the webinar. You're not checking your phone, not checking your email. I'm guilty of that. If I'm on a webinar, I'm checking my email. I'm looking at my phone. I'm probably scrolling through social media because we're so great at multitasking now. Um, but you would just be 100% focused on whatever it is that you're doing in the moment. And your goal is not to get distracted by thoughts about the past or not to get distracted about the things that you have in coming up in the future because you are just being, you're here in the present moment. Distractions do come up and those distracting thoughts will pop up and that's okay. We acknowledge them. And then we just kind of focus back on whatever's happening in the present. Next, progressive muscle relaxation. So we talked about that a little bit before, but that's tightening and loosening of various muscles up and down the body, starting at the head down to the feet. And that's very soothing and relaxing. And that's really a good one to do before bedtime. So I'm thinking, I think just about almost everyone's in the Eastern Standard Time. But before you go to bed, if you're going to bed within the next couple of hours, you can try that when you lie down. Just think about tightening and relaxing, starting at your head. You can and tighten, relax, you know, your jaw, your, your shoulders, your arms, and just work your way down your body. And then guided meditation. So during guided meditation, we use imagery and visualizations. And it's really helpful for anyone who finds typical medical uh, medication techniques challenging, because it's just nice to have someone guide you through and just to be able to focus on their voice. And sometimes that helps kind of keep the distracting at bay. That's at least how it works for me. So we've gone through all of this. Let's meditate. And while I set this up for meditation, and this is really the last part of the webinar that we're going to do before we end with any questions that you might have and just do our conclusion, I want you to get somewhere comfortable where you're comfortable, you can sit down, relax, put your feet up if you need to, somewhere you feel safe. Ideally, you would close your eyes for this, but it's okay if you can't, you don't have to, but I just want you to find somewhere comfortable and I'm gonna get some music started that I pick. This is music that I use. And if you have Apple Music, it's great. That's also what I use. Okay, we are going to get started. Welcome to our guided meditation. Today, we will take a journey in our minds that leaves us feeling refreshed and renewed. Now that you've found a comfortable position, I want you to relax fully, close your eyes if you feel comfortable. You can rest your hands in your lap. And then I just want you to bring your attention to your breath. You don't have to breathe fast or slow, but I just want you to be aware of the fact that you're breathing. You are breathing and the air is coming in and out and in and out. Imagine yourself, you're walking down a peaceful path in a lush forest. It's a sunny day, the air is cool. The sun is filtering through the trees. The trees are shielding you from the sun. Then there are gentle shadows. As the trees sway, you can feel the warmth of the, the sun 
moving around your body. And with each step you take, your stresses seem to melt away. And you're walking. As you're walking, you want to bring your attention back to your breath. And you breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. And you're going to keep breathing. With every breath that you take, you are going to feel your body releasing the stress. With every breath you take, you're going to feel more and more relaxed. You hear the sounds of the birds chirping and the leaves rustling in the gentle breeze. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. And you're walking and continue to focus on your breathing. The birds are still chirping and the leaves are still rustling. You can feel the soft, cool earth under your feet. You can feel the breeze tickle your toes. It's just a beautiful day. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. As you're walking, you come across a clear, tranquil steam stream. And you think, why not have a seat? So you sit by the stream and you watch the water flow smoothly over the rocks. You hear the bubbling and each wave of the stream soothes and calms your spirit. Breathe in and breathe out. The water is warm as it ripples over your fingers. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Now you dip your other hand into the water. You feel the warmth of the water soothing your palms. And imagine that warmth spreading from your fingertips to your hands and into the rest of your body. It's calming, it's healing as it travels. And absorb the peace and the tranquility of this place and let it fill you with peace. And you feel so relaxed.
breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. And now you've decided that it's time to continue walking. As you continue walking, we are going to come to the end of this meditation. I want you to slowly bring your awareness back to the present. As you continue to come back to the present moment, hold on to the feelings of peace and calm from the forest and the stream as you bring movement and awareness back to your body. When you are ready, open your eyes and come back fully, bringing a piece of the forest with you. That was just a sample of guided meditation, and I hope that left you feeling a little more comfortable, a little calm, and that was short. We only did that for seven minutes, um, but I think, I imagine you probably could have done three more minutes. I am going to now, in closing, just say thank you very much for joining me for this webinar. I hope you feel a little more comfortable with meditation. If you're already meditating, I hope hopefully it was just a little nice, something to add to your repertoire. And I am most appreciative of your presence. Thank you very much for attending and have a wonderful, wonderful evening.